Good morning, everyone. Welcome to morning prayer. It is uh, a, just a true delight to be with you all. I hope everyone is warm and safe. Um, and if by chance you're not, I I just hope that uh, um, you know God loves you. And please, please reach out to those around you uh, for help. And um, definitely um, let us know if we need to be praying for you. That is a a true joy. We may not be able to um, be able to provide earthly uh, earthly blessings, um, but one of the things that we can do for each other is to pray and ask the Lord to to move those around us um, to help us and to help those that we see. Um, it has been really wild, uh, especially in Oklahoma, with weather, and so I know there's a lot of people who are who are definitely suffering during this cold spell. Well, today, regardless of the weather, regardless of whether it's great or bad, we are going to praise the name of, of our God. We are going to hear his word and pray for each other. Today, our soul to reading is Psalm 40. That can be found on page 319 of the Book of Common Prayer. We will be looking at Genesis chapter 16, and we will be going into chapter 8 of John, but it's... Uh, beginning 7 verses 53 through 830 uh, that is the um, woman caught in adultery and such a powerful powerful story of God's grace and uh, his compassion for us well let us begin today by saying our opening sentence that will be found on page 11 of the book of common prayer today's opening sentence is psalm 122 1. i was glad when they said unto me we will go into the house of the Lord. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there is no health in us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent. According to your promises, declared to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. The Almighty and Merciful Lord, grant you absolution from and remission from all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Our invitatory, or our psalm today, is, um, <laughs> wow, I just, I skipped over a page. I do apologize. Our invitatory psalm, I was right, is the Jubilate found on page 15. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. O come, let us adore him. O be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Be assured that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are the people and the sheep of his pasture. O go your way into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and speak good of his name. For the Lord is gracious, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures from generation to generation. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. O come, let us adore him. Our psalm is Psalm 40, found on page 319. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me and heard my call. He brought me out of the horrible pit, out of the mire and clay. He set my feet upon the rock and secured my footing. He has put a new song in my mouth, a song of thanksgiving unto our God. Many shall see and fear and shall put their trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man who has set his hope in the Lord, 
and has not turned to the proud or to those who go about lying. O Lord, my God, great are the wondrous works which you have done, and also your thoughts towards us. There is none who can be compared with you. If I should declare them and speak of them, it would be more than I may be able to express. Sacrifice and offering you do not desire, but my ears you have opened. Burnt offerings and sin offerings you have not required. And so I said, Behold, I come. In the volume of the book it is written to me that I delight to do your will, O my God. Indeed, your law is within my heart. I have declared your righteousness in the great congregation. Behold, I will not restrain my lips, O Lord, and that you know. I have not hidden your righteousness within my heart. My talk has been of your truth and of your salvation. I have not concealed your loving mercy and truth from the great congregation. But draw not your mercy from me, O Lord. Let your loving kindness and your truth always preserve me. For innumerable troubles have encompassed me. My sins have taken such hold of me that I am not able to look up. Indeed, they are more in number than the hairs of my head, and my heart has utterly failed me. O Lord, let it be your pleasure to deliver me. Make haste, O Lord, to help me. Let them be ashamed and confounded who seek after my soul to destroy it. Let them be driven backward and rebuked who wish me evil. Let them be desolate and rewarded with shame who say to me, Aha, aha. Let all those who seek you be joyful and glad in you. And let those who love your salvation say always, The Lord be praised. As for me, I am poor and needy, but the Lord cares for me. You are my helper and deliverer. Do not tarry, O my God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our first reading is Genesis chapter 16. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, had, had borne him no children. She had a female Egyptian servant, whose name was Hagar. And Sarai said to Abram, Behold now, the Lord has prevented me from bearing children. Go in to my servant. It may be that I shall obtain children by her. And Abram listened to the voice of Sarai. So after Abram had lived ten years in the land of Canaan, Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar the Egyptian, her servant, and gave her to Abram, her husband, as a wife. And he went into Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, she looked with contempt on her mistress. And Sarai said to Abram, May the wrong done to me be done to you. I gave you my servant to be to your embrace. And when she saw that she had conceived, she looked on, looked on me with contempt. May the Lord judge between you and me. But Abram said to Sarai, Behold, your servant is in your power. Do to her as you please. Then Sarai de dealt harshly with her, and she fled from her. The angel of the Lord found her by a spring of water in the wilderness, the spring on the way to Shur. And he said, Hagar, servant of Sarai, where have you come from, and where are you going? She said, I am fleeing from my mistress Sarai. The angel of the Lord said to her, Return to your mistress and submit to her. The angel of the Lord also said to her, I will surely multiply your offspring so that they cannot be numbered for multi multitude. And the angel of the Lord said to her, Behold, you are pregnant and shall bear a son, and you shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord has listened to your affliction. He shall be a wild donkey of a man, his hand against everyone, and everyone's hand against him. And he shall dwell over against all his kinsmen. So she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her, You are a God of seeing. For she said, Truly there I have seen him who looks after me. Therefore the well was called <coughs> Ber Ishlaroi. It lies between Kadesh and Barad. And Hagar bore Abram a son, and Abram called the name of his son whom Hagar bore Ishmael. Abram was 86 years old when Hagar bore Ishmael to Abram. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading comes from the Gospel of John, the seventh chapter, beginning at verse 53. They went each to his own house, but Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Early in the morning he came again to the temple. All the people came to him, and he sat down and taught them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and placed her in the midst. They said to him, Teacher, this woman has been caught in the act of adultery. Now in the law Moses commanded us to stone such women. So what do you say? This they said to test him, that they might have some charge to bring against him. 
Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. And as they continued to ask him, he stood up and said to them, Let him who is without sin among you be the first to throw a stone at her. And once more he bent down and wrote on the ground. But when they had heard it, they went away one by one, beginning with the older ones. And Jesus was left alone with the, with the woman standing before him. Jesus stood up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, sin no more. Again Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So the Pharisees said to him, You are bearing witness about yourself. Your testimony is not true. Jesus answered, Even if I do bear witness about myself, my testimony is true. For I know where I come from and where I am going. But you do not know where I come from or where I am going. You judge according to the flesh. I judge no one. Yet even if I do judge, my judgment is true. For it is not I alone who judge, but I and the Father who sent me. In your law it is written that the testimony of two people is true. I am the one who bears witness about myself, and the Father who sent me bears witness about me. They said to him, therefore, Where is your father? Jesus answered, You know neither me nor my father. If you knew me, you would know my father also. These words he spoke in the treasury as he taught in the temple. But no one arrested him because his hour had not come yet. So he said to them again, I am going away, and you will see me, and you or seek me, and you will die in your sin. Where I am going, you cannot come. So the Jews said, Will he kill himself, since he says, Where I am going, you cannot come? He said to them, You are from below, I am from above. You are of this world, I am not of this world. I told you that you would die in your sins, for unless you believe that I am I am he who will you will die in your sins. So they said to him, Who are you? Jesus said to them, Just what I have been telling you from the beginning. I have much to say about you, and much to judge, but he who sent me is true, and I declare to the world what I have heard from him. They did not understand that he had been speaking to them about the Father. So Jesus said to them, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am he, and that I do nothing on my own authority, but speak just as the Father taught me. And he who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do the things that are pleasant, pleasing to him. As he was saying these things, many believed in him. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to Christ. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable unto you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Today we have some pretty interesting uh, passages, don't we? We have Abram and Sarai and Hagar, uh, which is all, all kinds of uh, interesting. Um, something that needs to be noted is that it says that Abram listened to his wife. Now, we are only in chapter 16 of Genesis. Uh, does that sound like something we should be, you know, hearkening back to? Yeah, it's exactly the, the image and the phrase of Eve giving the fruit to Adam. Um, this is not something that was supposed to happen. Uh, Sarai is definitely um, not, not doing what she should, but then Abram is kind of a big dumb animal, just like, just like Adam. I mean, they should have both said no. They should have both said, we're not going to do this. Because it's interesting, Adam heard from God. Eve, Eve didn't hear the command and the, the, um, the things that Adam had. That was Adam. And Abram heard from God. Um, we don't have where really Sarai is, uh, talked to by God. Those two should have been the ones to step in and say, wait, no, no, God said this. Why, why would we do this? But both don't. And even though we look at Eve handing off the fruit and Sarai, uh, giving Abram her servant, um, you know, there could have been a lot more done, right? And then we get to John, and I think there's the same type of thing going on here in a way. These scribes and Pharisees that hand the woman over to Jesus, 
they are the ones that have really studied the word of God. They spent their whole life looking at the intricacies of what is said, the dot and the tittles. They knew it all. And here they come bringing a woman caught in adultery to the temple. That's not where she should have been taken. It's not where you take somebody who is unclean. That's where you take somebody who's unclean that's going to be made clean by sacrifice. That's where you take them. But if they're going to stone her, you stone them elsewhere because this is a holy place. But for some reason, they don't catch that. They're so caught up in their own desires and their own way of fulfilling God's plan, which is what they're ultimately doing, right? They want to, uh, in their own understanding, bring about the Messiah, his reign, get the Romans out of there. And they, they bring this lady to Jesus. And what's great is Jesus does hear from God and Jesus does the will of God. And, well... Jesus is the sacrifice and has the power to absolve from sin and to forgive. And there in the temple where sins are forgiven, where offenses are washed away, Jesus forgives her of her sins. <laughs> I, I would love to know what he was writing in the dirt, <laughs> but he, he forgives her of her sins. And he says, go and sin no more. She has been cleansed. She's been redeemed, um, delivered from death. And so she goes, a lady caught in adultery is, is free to live a life in right relationship with God. And the sad thing is that the people who knew better, that heard the word, walked away not having that relationship. They weren't listening to the Son, therefore they weren't listening to the Father. They didn't know the Son, so they didn't know the Father. They had no idea where the Son came from, and so they had no idea where he was going all those promises, all those shadows, and they just didn't get it. So on that happy note, what does that have to say to us? I think what it says to us is, one, we can hear the words of God. We can know his word. We can know every dot, every, uh, every T that's been crossed. We can know every punctuation mark. But if we do not... If we don't truly listen to the Father, if we don't truly listen to what he's saying to us through Scripture, then we're going to get it all wrong. We have to listen. We have to listen to God. And it's not this distance that we have to go through to listen to him. I mean, that's the beautiful thing with the incarnation, right? It's right here. It's with us. The Holy Spirit dwells within us. And we can hear and we need to cling to the person of Jesus Christ for him to tell us what this means, for him to lead us into that truth, because he truly does hear. And we also always need to be in the position of knowing that we can screw up on that. We can be big, dumb animals, driven by our passions, driven by our own ideas. We just need to trust in the Holy Spirit and always ask, did I get it right? But for those that may not know Jesus, for those that may not quite Trust him. You know what's amazing? It doesn't matter what kind of life we've lived. It doesn't matter what kind of depravity that we have engaged in. From the smallest amount to the largest. Jesus Christ still offers us forgiveness. He still offers us redemption. Washing away our sins sanctifying us, justifying us, like we read in the passage on Sunday from 1 Corinthians 6. He still does that for us. And we don't have to do great works. We don't even have to, <laughs> yeah, all we have to do is just say yes. And through his power and his word, he will bring about the sanctification we need, which means he'll make us like him. That's what that word means. So now, let's go through the rest of this, this service. Let's praise God, sing His glory, know that if we are His, that we can hear from Him, and that we're offered a, a very immediate relationship with Him. And if you don't know Him, you know, just let this be your first praise to Him. Accept Him into your heart. Accept Him as Lord. Trust Him as your Savior. And just sing His praise. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
And now, we will say the Benedictus es Domine on page 18. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple. On the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you beholding the depths in the high vault of heaven, glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show your mercy upon us, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide those who govern us, and lead us in the way of justice and truth. Clothe your ministers with righteousness, and let your people sing with joy. O Lord, save your people, and bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and defend us by your mighty power. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and take not your Holy Spirit from us. O God, the author of peace, the lover of concord, to know you as eternal life and to serve you as perfect freedom, defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth, and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your Spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. It's now time for us to lift up our own prayers and intercessions. Um, we definitely need to be praying for those who are exposed to the elements. I know today is supposed to be quite a bit warmer than it has been, um, but it's still not safe. Uh, so we need to be just lifting up those who, who are um, in danger right now. Um, please be praying for my mom. She had uh, knee replacement surgery yesterday and is doing well, um, but, um, but uh, still is going to have that long uh, period of recovery. So uh, yeah, please be Please be praying for her. Um, well, let us go to the Lord, just lifting up those that we have continued to pray for and who have asked us to lift them up. Holy Father, we love you and we thank you. Please be with mom as she recovers from knee replacement surgery. Allow her knee to heal. Let the pain um, subside quickly. Let her go home soon. Lord, we do pray for Kelly and for Isaiah as well. Lord, be with those who are who are in danger because of the weather. Protect them and guide them. Lord, let them know where to go to find help. Lord, let them let them know where to go to hunker down and be safe. Father, we pray for the wars in Ukraine and in Israel. Lord, let all those who are who are a part of this, Lord, give them wisdom and guidance. 
Humble those who have hardened their hearts to you, Lord, those who have perpetrated evils. Please stop. Change their hearts to, to just trust you and to find your redemption, Lord. Please let this moment of atrocity bring the sons of Ishmael and the sons of Abraham to you to see the fullness of the promises that you have given, Lord. Let your church in those places, Lord, just be a shining and bright and beautiful light of how your kingdom is and how your reign is ruled. We ask you to please uh, be with all those who are who are seeking public office, Lord. Allow your people to know how to vote and what things to vote for. Lord, we pray for Father Terry. We pray for Rosa Lee. Let her little body heal. Doctors, take care of her. Give her parents strength. Be with Emily and Peter, as they await the birth of their little one. Please be with Alessa and with uh, Benjamin. We pray for the Levonitises and the Springsteens. Lord, in your holy name, amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we are unworthy servants. Give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies, that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. To whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions, as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you all so much for being here. I do hope your day is as full of the awareness of God's mercy and grace. And until tomorrow, go with the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.